afternoon, Niagara. There's a song that we sing, it says, I'm still here. Somebody asked me, you, I thought you were supposed to be arrested. I said, I thought the same, but it still hasn't happened. And I thank God for that. It is extremely sad that in Canada we are where we are. But I've got good news for you. We have someone that is on his throne. His name is God. Our King is Jesus. You will never win. You will never win fighting God. Get on the right side of history. Get on the right side of prophecy. Get on the right side. Stand with God. You can't go wrong standing with God. I feel no hatred against anyone whatsoever, but I am extremely determined. I feel in me working in lion's nature. As Pastor Art says, we are lions. We have a fellow pastor, Tim Stevens, in prison in Calgary right now as I speak. That is wrong! I don't care who says what. It's wrong in Canada to uh, uh, jail the pastors. It's wrong. And they need to bring them out. Let me tell every police force nationwide, get to work and take care of things. Leave the pastors alone. But if the police force gets too involved with the pastors, watch out, we might get you saved. Because when you deal with a pastor, you don't deal with just a regular human being, not in ourselves, you know what I'm saying. But we are conduits of God, we are representatives, we are ambassadors of God. And in case you disagree that a pastor is that, then they should shut down their church. Then they should pack up and do nothing. But if we are called of God, let's stand up to the tyranny. There is an arrest warrant out for another young fellow pastor in Manitoba. A church building is fenced off in Edmonton, Alberta. I wish I was in Edmonton this coming week. I would enjoy taking that fence down. Apparently on July 1st, it's coming down. Let's cheer for that. Should have never come up in the first place. A church building is locked in Waterloo, Ontario. Our very own church building that we worked hard for right from a cornfield is presently locked up. I'll just say it by the devil. I just counted my tickets last night, so I'm giving, to give you an up-to-date count, I have 32 tickets that will del were delivered to my address. We have, on May 14th, we received a fine, which needs to be paid now, $117,000. On May 31st, we were fined $66,000. On June 18th, we were fined $90,500. The total come now coming up to $273,500. Just brace yourself, I'll say something. I'm known for saying controversial things. I may as well not let you down this morning. As far as $273,500, I'll say since Ottawa is in the business of printing money, print some extra for me.
and I want you to be delivered that you can deliver it directly to who is that? supposed to be delivered to someone you can take it directly there while we I will, will be preaching and while I will be helping to save people and baptizing people and be a real man of God churches continue to be targeted by our governments without any evidence that they are a source of significant outbreaks we haven't had one death, thank God, and every death is tragic. But I'm saying it's not about COVID, folks. It's not about COVID. It is about control. And that's why, that's why they hate the churches. Randy is my boss. He tells me what to do. All right, I, I, I'm, I'm very heavy. Okay. So, our situation is so dire. Is that the way to say it? Our situation is so serious that even a U.S. senator just two days ago, and I won't bore you with it, I, want to, I don't want to read the whole letter, but uh, Senator Josh Hawley says... Listen, hear this thank you for having an ear for us thank you for listening to what's happening to your northern neighbor we are in trouble we are in trouble <laughs> mr premier from alberta you can no longer invite people worldwide telling them come to canada if you first if you face persecution now we need to invite the Cubans and the Russians and the Polish. We need to invite all of them and ask if they could come and change our locks at the church houses. Shame on us. Shame on Canada. What we have done in this beautiful country. But I've got news for you. We aren't giving up. We're claiming it back. Look, you see here. What you see here today, this is normal. This is normal. And in case you would like to attend a church service that's very enjoyable, 10.30 tomorrow morning in Elmer, Ontario. We have extra excitements there. We usually have a drone flying overhead by the police. We have all kinds of excitement. We have people parked beside the road. We have people holding a sign up there saying, Pastor Henry is there for the prophet. He's not a prophet. So some nice things going on there. We have been determined whether it was driving service or whether it was outside, whatever it is, they cannot shut God down. Let me just real quick read to you that something that Josh Hawley wrote. He said Canadian authorities arrest of faith leaders and seizures of church property, among other enforcement actions, appear to constitute systematic, ongoing, and egregious violations of religious freedom. I urge the Commission on the International Religious Freedom to take whatever action is necessary to address and rectify this situation and consider adding Canada to the Commission's watch list. That's where we are this morning. And in closing, before I pray, I would just like to read you one short verse out of the Bible. That's my testimony. Psalm 118 verse 6 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can men do unto me? Pastor, you don't realize what could happen to you. I guess by now I realize everything because you've been doing it in front of my eyes. What is it? Jail? Fine? The ticket? Summons? What do you want? And I might, I might end up in jail. If you hear I do, 
please don't expect me to sign that I'll get out of there because I'll be preaching in there and getting people saved. So I went to the pastors, all the pastors in this land, could we wake you up? What would it take for you to wake up? If we had from the get-go stood as pastors should stand, this would have never happened. Would have never happened. Because we have a king that's above all kings. We have a lord that's above all lords. And that's what they are scared of. Keep being scared, rulers. Keep being scared while we will live in no fear and we will be, like the Honorable Stephen Baker said, we will be real Canadians, free Canadians, free to worship God as we see we should be. God bless you. If pastor forgets to pray, you need to read and nail me for this one. <laughs> Lord, we thank you this morning, this afternoon. We thank you, Lord, that we have you to come to. Lord, you see us here as the human family gathered. And Father, you know what our soul's desire is, that you would help us. Lord, that the enemy would remove this tyranny. Lord, that we would enjoy our God-given freedom. Lord, we will worship you, we will praise you, we will lift up your name regardless of the consequences. Lord, it's a small price for us to pay when we look back what happened in history, oh God. Help us not to shy back. Bless every single one that's here today. Bless those that are sick. And now, Lord, Lord, those graves that they have found of those little children, Help, oh God, that we would not repeat the very same thing now and, and torture our little ones. Lord, help us, oh God, to stand up. Help us to stand like Daniel, like the three Hebrews, like the apostles did. Lord, help us, oh God, to obey you rather than man. By the grace of God, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen.